Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Okay, gentlemen, five tips on how to get the most out of any conference. Over the next few months, I'm going to be traveling to InfusionCon. It's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona. That's March. New Media Expo. It's going to be in Las Vegas in April. Then I've got my own StyleCon conference, and that's going to be in Atlanta in May. Texas Venture Labs in Austin in May as well. And then VidCon in California. I think it's going to be the Anaheim area in July traveling a lot, going to a lot of conferences, not as many as last year, and I spoke at a lot more conferences last year. However, it is something that I think if you follow these five tips, you're going to get a lot of value because you're going to save time, you're going to save money, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into them. Point number one, craft your elevator pitch. Realize you're going to meet a lot of people uh, and everyone else is meeting a lot of people. You want to be remembered and you want to be referable. I've said this in other videos, but you want those two things. When you give someone your business card, you don't want them later on that night to look at that card and say, who the heck was this? You want to create an image, a story. You want to stick in their mind. Now, I'm going to link you over in the article, which I will support. You know, I have a great article that's going to support this. I'm going to have a quick little PDF on how you can put your elevator pitch together. But I will say really quick, what you want to have is you want to present a problem. You want to get them to say, oh yeah, I know about that. Just to give you an example. I say, you know how most men can't dress very well and almost everyone's always, yeah, I've got a brother or yeah, I know that or yeah, I know I need to improve, you know, I need to dress a little bit better. My wife tells me that. And then I explain how I solve that problem. Now, if I'm speaking with a woman, most likely she isn't my target market. She's not going to probably buy one of my courses. However, instantly she knows, you know, Antonio is that guy that helps other men dress better. I need to introduce him to my father, to my son, to my, you know, to my husband. So all of a sudden I become referable. For the gentleman, all of a sudden, you know, I and I, with the guys, I'll throw in a little bit more, maybe about, you know, I use military history and science. So they're like, oh, Antonio is that guy that makes style basically acceptable. He makes it so that regular guys like me will want to actually use it because I'm actually going to get something from it. It's not frivolous. So. Focus in on, you want to nail that elevator pitch. You want to have multiple versions for the various people that you're going to meet. Okay, so point number two, dress sharp. You, you knew that one was going to come from me, but you've got to think there's three reasons, three big reasons at a conference that you want to dress sharp. Number one is send the signal of authority. Even if you're lost, you don't want someone saying, you know, hey, you're in the wrong area. You want someone saying, excuse me, sir, may I help you? And they're going to do that based off of if you look important. I've had it so that people have come up to me at conferences and ask, you know, me directions. They ask, you know, hey, uh, are you a speaker? Or, you know, you look familiar versus ignoring you. If you're at a conference, you're there to meet people. It's better to send the signal of authority than it is to send the signal of, you know, this guy is a nobody. Point number two is opportunity may open up. So, I think it was last year at New Media Expo, Ryan Masters was hanging out with me and all of a sudden they needed a, they needed someone on a panel that could speak in front of this group. And there was Ryan, he was you know dressed well and he was able to go up there, jump up on stage, look good and it, this was almost no notice and be able to talk about online video. So the point is, is you never know when opportunity is going to knock. You never know when you're going to meet your next customer. You're going to meet this amazing person who runs a television show who's looking for someone to come on and speak to their audience about psychology, about marketing, about sales, about, you know, I don't know, you know, lights, about cameras. In any, some, whatever you're an expert in, you want to be presentable. You want to look like the authority. You want to look like the expert. And if you get the chance to be on film, boom, there's the opportunity. You don't want to miss it. The last and final reason is out of respect. So, I think it was, I was listening to an interview and uh, my, my friend Gideon down in uh, uh, Australia was saying that he went to a conference and he met a gentleman and the first thing he noticed is of all the people that were talking to him, this guy was the best dressed. So he immediately thought, you know, this guy's got to be somewhat important. Turns out the gentleman just dressed nice because he was excited to meet Gideon and he wanted to put his best foot forward but Gideon remembered him. And things like that to me, I. I dress well because I want to show respect for other people and I, I also think it you know fits with my brand, but show others respect. So point number three, a packing list. Now 
over in the article, I'm going to have a breakout, a PDF of my packing list so you can download it. But you want to have a packing list because it's going to save you time. You simply look at the list, you grab what you need, boom, it's going to save you money. Now, I've gone to conferences and forgotten, what was it, my, my charger from my, from my laptop. And so, what did I have to do? I had to jump on Amazon, get it overnighted to my hotel so it was there the next day because I've got to have a charger for your laptop and, you know, that cost me 40 to 50 bucks. Good thing is, I guess now I have a backup charger. But the point is, I spent money I didn't need to. Last is headache. There are some things that you just simply can't get replaced. Uh, if you were going to bring, you know, I, I've been to conferences and people forgot their business cards. How can you, you can't forget your business cards going to a conference? That is the way that people are going to stay in touch with you. Um, you know, we've got an entire video on business cards, so I'm going to link over to that as well. But the point is, don't have the headache, save the money, and save the time. Have a checklist for when you're going to travel to a conference. Point number four research people. So, that's one of those things whenever you start talking with somebody and they're like, hey, you know, tell me a little bit. When they don't know anything about you, you're almost having to start from scratch versus when you meet someone who's maybe listened to 10 of your podcasts, has watched 20, people that watch a lot of my videos when I meet them in person, I feel like they know me better than my wife, it seems like. They know all these little things about me, all the details. They know you know about my kids. They know about that I live in Wisconsin. They know I was in the Marine Corps. All these details. They know why I wear my ring on my right hand. All of these little details. They know them. And so, instantly, we've got a deeper connection. You can do that with the speakers without creeping them out. You, you stick with the public available information. The other thing you can do is reach out to them before you show up at the conference. Say, hey, I'm going to be at the conference. I see you're speaking there. I see you're attending. I really think we have a lot in common. I would love to set up a time. To set up a time before the conference start is so much better than trying to set it up after or right after they've spoken. It's just a better use of your time to do this before. Finally, point number five, schedule and prioritize. You don't want to spend your precious time at the conference trying to plan and prepare for it. Use dead time. Usually, you know, get up early in the morning, definitely a couple days before you leave. Schedule out where you want to go. Most conferences are going to have it laid out who's speaking. Prioritize in case you go into a speech or a presentation and you don't like it. And you can go to another one. And know exactly what you're going to do. You want to. You don't have to stick to the schedule, but you want to have it there so that you're not spending your precious time. Now, one trick that I do whenever I go to conferences is I always arrive one day early and try to stay one day late. The reason I do this, I love to give myself margin in my life, and that's that little bit of extra room that I don't feel pressured. So when I get to the conference, if I've forgotten anything, if I'm not prepared, if I need more time to do exactly what I just talked about, which is schedule and prioritize or get some work done on my company, I can do that the day before in my hotel and not feel worried. Afterwards, I don't like to come home and not spend time with my kids. And you guys travel, you know exactly what I mean. You want to spend time with your family when you get back. So I stay one day later and I just focus in. I work a solid 12 hour day and catch up on all my email, catch up on all those other things I don't have time for in the three to four day conference. Gentlemen, hopefully you find this useful. Go check out the article. I've got those little PDFs you can download. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.